This is your like uh, hobby. It's surprise. Yeah. yeah. Go wrong so, with it. Surprise. <laughs> Pretty sure with the revenue kind of. I guess we should tell people what this should be. What's going on? What's going on? Is that? I mean, I feel like stupid. If she had have killed me instead of marrying me, she would have been free by now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tell a joke. My brother asked me to tell a joke before we got started. What, who said, oh no? <laughs> so I hope I don't in, insult anybody with, uh, with this joke. <clears throat> this cowboy riding across the range and he gets captured by a tribe of Indians. They take him to his camp, put him in the teepee and say, we're gonna kill you in three days. But before we kill you, every morning we're going to give you a wish. Whatever you want, we'll do for you. But on the third day, we're going to kill you. Cowboy says, OK. First morning, chief comes, takes him out of the teepee. Two more days, we're going to kill you. But first of all, we'll give you your first wish. Cowboy says, I'd like to see my horse. OK. So they bring his horse over. <clears throat> Cowboy goes up, whispers in the horse's ear. Horse rides off into the sunset. Half an hour later, he comes back and he's got this beautiful blonde, naked blonde, sitting on the horse. <laughs> Cowboy sort of looks at his horse, takes the woman into the teepee, has his way. <clears throat> Next day, same thing. Tomorrow we're going to kill you, but today we'll give you your second wish. Cowboy says, OK, I'd like to talk to my horse. This is Jeet's joke, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Next day, same thing. The chief comes up, drags a cowboy out of, out of the teepee. Says, today, we're going to kill you. But before we kill you, we're going to give you your... Cowboy looks and says, I'd like to talk to my horse. Indian chief looks at him, frowns. OK. <clears throat> horse comes up, cowboy whispers into his ear. I said, posse. <laughs> if, if you didn't understand it, put your hand up. Talk to Jeet. This joke. But today we're here to uh, 
celebrate my brother's birthday. I have nothing else to do. So there's a whole bunch of people here with absolutely no lives, obviously. But we're here to uh, honor Jim on his 60th birthday. Who's not 60? Oh, then I want to hear. But I'd like to thank everybody who, uh, who came tonight. I know that uh, it's cost us quite a bit to get you here. <clears throat> but a number of people came uh, quite a distance and I'd like to sort of honor them and point them out. First of all, the Juristas from next door. <laughs> and Dougie, Doug and Vicky from two doors over. I, however, came from blocks away. Actually, I have really neat friends, so I don't know most of you. <laughs> but I did want to uh, point out um, somebody we have here, one of the few uh, celebrities that we actually have, besides Al Floyd. <laughs> and that's, we have a gentleman from WWF Wrestling, our cousin Keith and his wife Marie. <laughs> Stand up, Keith, and uh, show them that haircut. Actually, just to get serious for a, for a minute, uh, this is quite an honor uh, to actually have a brother who survived. <laughs> but it actually, I did do something in, in terms of this on a little more serious note. I actually, for most of you who know me well, know that I uh, really love poetry and write quite, <laughs> and actually write quite a bit of poetry. I actually do. I do. I'm quite a sensitive fellow. I'm the shorter of the two. So I wrote this poem, and I'll try and recite it. I have it, I have it in my wallet, but I'll try and recite it. It's, I put a quite a bit of work on it when I was last week, and I hope I actually don't cry while I say this, because Jim means quite a bit to me. But <clears throat> So here we go. <clears throat> Jim, Jim, Jim. <laughs> Most of it rhyme. Does anybody actually have anything nice to say about Jim? <laughs> I've got no hands, Jim. <laughs> you don't count, man. <laughs> so I have one, one, uh, one story about Jim that's uh, maybe a little more recent. Jim, as you know, has lived, lived in Kamloops all of his life and uh, never traveled. There were other communities who refused to have him. <laughs> so Jim, I think this year, was it last year for the first time, actually traveled internationally, went on a cruise and went to Mexico. But Jim was a little bit nervous about going to, to Mexico uh, because it was the first time he'd actually been outside of Kamloops. So they went down and he, he booked his ticket. Uh, the travel agent went home and then started to worry a little bit about it. Phoned up Gary Souls, who's our travel agent, and said, uh, geez, Gary, I'm going to go to Mexico and spend a couple weeks there, but I'm a little afraid I don't speak Spanish. So how, like, how will I communicate? And Gary, who's uh, been virtually everywhere, said, well, just speak really slowly, and they'll understand you. <clears throat> so Gary uh, said, I'm right. Jim went down to Mexico, very comfortable, went into the bar went up to the bar and said, uh, I would like a beer. Bartender looks at him. <clears throat> what kind of beer would you like? <laughs> Jim, speaking Spanish, says, I would like a Coors. Bartender says, okay. <laughs> Brings Jim back, the beer puts it down. Jim looks up at him and says, I'm from Canada. Where are you from? <clears throat> Bartender says, I'm from Canada too. <laughs> Jim looks at him and says, then why are we speaking Spanish? <laughs> My brother, the world traveler. absolutely no neat stories about my brother other than the stuff I make up. <laughs> Jim was always the responsible one, the athlete, 
One with absolutely no friends other than the people we paid to come here. <laughs> but we are here to honor him tonight. And uh, if anybody would like to come up and take the mic from me, I'm just about run out of stories. <laughs> other than a few stories about Al Floyd, who's standing in the corner. <laughs> Tell them how clean your mother used to be. <laughs> my mother was so clean that she used to clean out the inside of my cowboy boots. <laughs> Kept finding L's marijuana. <laughs> he said, Here was L's marijuana. <laughs> I will do my poem again. <laughs> I really spent a lot of time on this. I'd like a little sensitivity. Maybe we could all repeat it. Jim. 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 Very good, very good. You're an audience that's growing on me. Dennis Marinick. Who cares? Gee, your joke was filthy. We, uh, where is uh, Jonathan? Jonathan, you have to admit who you are. Did you have something you wanted to try and show?